welcome to the Angel Mystic Podcast. I am super excited you are listening because this is where spiritually open minds can come together to explore the wonders of angels, spiritual connections, and the art of manifesting. Hosted by me, Amanda Took, the Angel Mystic, your spiritual midwife to help you on your journey to a fulfilling and happy life. You may have seen me on ITV, Channel 4, or even in Fate and Fortune magazine. In each episode, we will delve into the mystical world of angels, offering you insights, guidance, practical tools to deepen your connection with the upstairs so that you can find inner peace, happiness, joy, and create the life that you want. Tune in for weekly fun conversations, transformational insights that will elevate your spiritual journey and awaken your inner mystic. Please hit subscribe now as we embark on a transformational adventure with the Angel Mystic Podcast. I mentioned in the last podcast that there was some exciting spiritual training coming your way, and I have got more information on that for you right now. So it's called Spiritual Awakening. It's totally free training where we're going to be able to unleash your inner magic. So if you're wanting to maybe start your spiritual journey or embrace a little bit further along the path with your spiritual journey, because it is an ongoing journey, check it out. It's all in the show notes and there's a place waiting for you and it's totally free. We've also got Angel Summer School, which is starting on the 15th of July. And there is a couple of places left on that at the moment, but that is a six week intensive training with a Facebook group all happening on Zoom. If you're wanting to deepen your connections with your angels, go and check it out at the show notes. Let's start the podcast. Welcome back to the Angel Mystic Podcast. And today I have got a treat for you. I've got a fabulous guest and I can't wait to start talking to her. Um, I have actually been on her podcast before. If you haven't checked out Hannah's podcast, please go and do that. But Hannah is with us today. It's Hannah McIntyre. And yeah. Hello, Hannah. Thank you for being on the podcast. Oh, you are very welcome. I was so honoured to be asked and I cannot wait to catch up with you, Amanda. This is really exciting. It is. It's nice to talk to you again. It's a couple of years, I think, since I was on your podcast. Um and I still listen to your podcast. I do, you know, I'm a I'm a person that gets ready in the morning, listening to a podcast and so from business ones, spiritual ones, funny ones. But I always, you know, get a little notification that yours has got a new one out and I listen to it and I love what you talk about. So I have a burning question in me, though. Are you like me and always been spiritual? No. Really? Yeah. So um, I was completely unaware of the presence of spirit until I was nearly 30. Wow. Completely unaware. I mean, there's things now when I look back, I go, oh, duh, <laughs> that was clearly spirit with you. But no, completely unaware of it. Thought that people who were mediums knew they were mediums and people who could communicate with spirit knew that they could. That wasn't something that was part of my life. And I was just completely unaware. Oh my goodness. So what was the first thing that happened for you that made you start thinking, oh, there could be more to this life than what I thought? Um, I was working as a PA at a music school, so nothing to do with spirit or anything like that. And uh, my colleague and I were getting ready for what we used to call spit fest, which is where you would get a load of kids in to have a go on different instruments. And you would have to have a lot of dental wipes because if you've ever tried to get a five year old to have a go on a flute, it's a lot. And um, we were getting ready and she, we were just setting up the instruments and she just went, oh, I've got your granddad here. And I went, sorry, what? And she proceeded to just give me this communication from my grandfather, blew my mind and then said, oh, you should come to my group. You'd love it. So I went to her group thinking I was going to be an audience member. And I was there like, oh, I can't wait to see what people do. This is going to be amazing. And they went, your turn. And I went, no, 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 sorry. No, I'm not a medium. I'm just here to watch. And they went, no, nobody gets to come here and just watch. You're here to take part. And that was the start. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That is a lot of trust, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, 
I'm not entirely sure I communicated with spirit the first time. I've got to be honest. I think I just freaked out and mumbled something and backed off into a dark space. But it, it opened me up to the fact that it was available, that it wasn't just the chosen few, that anybody could open up to spirit and work with spirit if they wanted to. And that was just the passion then. And I've just worked really hard on it ever since. I um I recall when I first was put in a similar situation, I was going to a spiritualist church quite regularly and sat in the audience watching them deliver. I was already doing readings one-to-one, but I hadn't done any platform work. And this particular Sunday I was going and I thought, oh, I need to change my top. I don't know why, but I need to change my top. And then as I was leaving, my kids who were like teenagers at the time went, can we come? And I went, "Mm, well, if you want to. So took them along and on the drive there was teaching them how to be protected because, you know, spiritualist churches are not very good at that. Um, And sat in the audience and I knew this medium was going to come to me and she said, oh, I've got your nana here. Oh, yeah, here we go. And she says, uh, you're the one that should be on stage, not me. Come on up. I was like, oh, my goodness. I went, no, 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 no. And she said, no, no, you must come up. So I went up. She you do this already, don't you? I went, well, one-to-one, but not one-to-many. So she says, no, no, you can do this. You can do this. And the most weirdest thing happened. The whole audience blended. It just, like, merged. And I could only see one person. Wow. That was the one person that I had to go to to connect in with and deliver a message but that was all trust and I talk about this with my clients all the time the key to this development is trust isn't it Mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely and I think it's trust in yourself yeah yeah I never doubted spirit for a second but I doubted my ability to communicate with them many times because you think you're making it up don't you yeah you think oh no I must be making that up Yeah. And, you know, some sort of weird image flies through your mind at 100 miles an hour and you go, was that a duck? And you and you and it's so hard. And the trouble with mediumship is as soon as you slam the brakes on and say, was that what I thought it was? You're stopping that energy from building and you're putting like a stick in your bike spoke and you're stopping the experience. So you have to just trust those fleeting impressions, those untangible bits that you're trying to grab hold of that just whisper away Mm -hmm. and it is a vulnerability for that yeah I know because we're worried about judgment aren't we worried about what people think and are we getting it right and we don't want to deliver a message that you know wasn't accurate we do as a you know psychic medium we do have our concerns about that sort of stuff if we are true and good at what we do and have good ethics and all of that um so, yeah, we do have to 100% trust. What else do we need to do? Because, you know, when you've got that um, that flow like you talk about, I always think of it as a bit like we are really just the, the messenger. You know, we can use all these tools. We can use cards. We can use balls, crystal balls, pendulums, palm reading. They're all just tools. Mm-hmm. What we are is the messenger. And it's like a bit like the postman. We don't have to interpret what's in that envelope. We just have to deliver the envelope. We just have to deliver that message. I can remember sitting in my little reading room years and years ago doing this reading and all I kept getting was this big yellow teapot, big yellow teapot, big yellow teapot. And I kept thinking, oh, shut up, I don't understand what the big yellow teapot means. And I kept ignoring it and it kept coming, yellow teapot, yellow teapot, big yellow teapot. And eventually I said, oh, I just keep getting a big yellow teapot. And the woman just broke into tears because... Tears of confirmation, aren't they? You know, that mm-hmm. it's it's hit home. Um, and we don't need to understand the messages, do we? We just need to deliver them. Absolutely, absolutely. I think a lot of mediumship is misrepresented in the way that it works. I know when I first started developing and people were saying, I'm seeing. I thought they were seeing like I'm seeing you like that. They're And so I was like, oh, oh, I'm I'm the duff one. I, you know, I'm hearing. And I thought it was going to be a separate voice like I hear you. And so when I realized that actually it was people seeing things in their mind's eye, hearing hearing their own voice in their own head, it it blew my mind, really. And that is the difficulty with it, because you 
you trust that voice. That voice can also be unkind and unpleasant. It writes your shopping list. It berates you when you're running late. And so to trust that voice when it's bringing in something from spirit is massive. For me, I think the biggest piece of advice I can give anybody is that there's no escaping yourself in mediumship. So if you can't spend any time in your own company, then you you're always going to have a resistance to just surrendering to the spirit world because in that little gap between you and spirit, there's just nothing but you and you. There's mm -hmm. just nothing but yourself and your doubts and your insecurities and the way you feel about you. And so the biggest piece of advice I can give anybody is spend time on your own. Be present with you. What's coming up for you? What are you avoiding? And that is the start of it, really, because everything else after that is easy peasy. I love my own company. I mean, for one reason is I never feel alone anyway, because, you know, we have the upstairs with us all the time, our angels and our guides. So, yeah, you're right in, in that 100 percent. I love what you said before about, you know, you thought people were seeing and you were hearing. I say this to people all the time clairvoyance, clairaudience, you know, when you're seeing somebody delivering messages, particularly platform mediums, and they're saying, ah, oh, I've got your granddad here and I can see he looks like and he's doing this and he's saying this. You are thinking they're actually seeing and hearing and all of that, but often they're just picking up a, like a vibration that's coming to them. They're like a transmitter, if you like, and they're receiving the message. And then when they speak, they translate it into mm -hmm. the English language. Absolutely. Um, it isn't really about always seeing and hearing. It's often about feeling and sensing and knowing. And people feel, sense and know far more than they hear and they see. So they really pick things up without even realizing it and don't join the dots up. Absolutely. For sure. Mm -hmm. I think we always want, I expected it to be more tangible than mm -hmm. it is. I expected it to feel different or yeah, when I walk out on stage, when I demonstrate, I don't feel like the spirit world are with me. I know that they're with me, but I don't feel like they're with me. I feel like I'm walking out there on my own. And you have to take that leap and go, okay, who's with me? Who's going to work with me? And you have to be in that vulnerability. Do you ever still get, like if I've not done readings for a while and I have, because I don't do readings a lot now, it's not part of my full business model, but when I do do readings, I think, oh, my goodness, what if I get nothing? I know. What if the angels don't turn up, which is absolute rubbish, but I still think that, don't we? Absolutely. I think that's finally starting to lessen now because I've done so many years of demonstrating and they've always turned up. Um, so but also I back myself into a corner, Amanda. So if I'm demonstrating, I'm not sitting around preparing to work in, in the way that I always imagined mediums did, I will fill that space with anything. You often find me stood at the door chatting to people as they're coming in, because if I sit and focus on what I'm about to do, the fear takes over. And that's when I have those kind of thoughts. So I sort of distract myself with anything else that I can. So I don't engage in that. But yeah, if I did, that thought would be there in a heartbeat. Yeah, absolutely. Which again is, is back to trusting them, isn't it? And trusting that they're always with us knowing that and not just operating like that when you are working but operating that in the whole of your life definitely definitely it's so much easier when you know that you are fully supported doesn't it yeah absolutely I think that's why I really credit spirit guides particularly with changing my life because it was my grandfather coming through that set me on this journey but it was my spirit guides love and inspiration that changed everything it was that team letting me know that I wasn't on my own and I was doing better than I was giving myself credit for mm. that that helped me change yeah and how did you transition from doing you know what did you call it spit spit fest and doing... <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> how did you transition from a you know a real job to doing what you do now with difficulty in honesty because it's again another trust another brings up all your imposter syndrome it changes everything when you start charging for your mediumship 
sometimes in a good way, because I always say to my students, the trouble with practice sitters, practice groups is the need isn't there. So when you work with real sitters, you know that feeling when you've got someone in front of you and they're really in need. It's got a charge, hasn't it? You go, oh, this is going to go because it's it's got that energy. When you're working with students, yeah, of course, they're still in need sometimes, but it's not the same. It hasn't got that electrifying energy. So I did it little by little, actually, Amanda. I had left the music school and I had a cooking business called Home Cooked by Hannah. And um, I was doing ready meals and cooking ready meals and delivering those around Kent, but also developing my mediumship. And when it came time for me to start working, I did it very slowly. I did a couple of clients a week and then three clients a week and then a bit by bit by bit. And then it almost got its own energy, its own momentum. I went from sort of spreading myself in all directions, trying to cook, trying to do this, to reducing the cooking, to the cooking being gone. And all of a sudden, it felt like in no time at all, I was fully booked for readings five days a week and healing and running a circle. And that was that. And it was done. As it was meant to be. Yeah. I just had to take that little step that they couldn't do for me. Just had to trust. Yeah. Absolutely. So you have a book, don't you, that you are getting into the world, which is exciting. It's doing really, really well. So I'm so pleased for you. So thank you. If someone was, well, what's the title of the book, first of all? It's called You Are a Medium. You Just Don't Know It Yet. And what are people going to learn from reading that book? They're going to learn the mechanics of it. And I know that some people turn away from the mechanics of mediumship. But for me, I've got a very inquisitive, very logical mind. And I found on my journey when I was working with teachers, I would want to know why it worked the way it does and how it works. It wasn't enough for me to just someone to say, open up and spirit are there. What do you mean by open up? What does that look like? What does that feel like? How do I know if I've opened up? Have I opened up enough? Is there a limit? Can you open up too much? I've always been a pain with questions. (laughs) And so... Basically, it's everything that spirit have taught me in the last decade and a bit on how mediumship works, why it works the way it does, and what you can do to strengthen that connection. Wow. That sounds really good for people that are wanting to go down that route for themselves personally and possibly maybe even go professionally as well. Yeah, Yeah, I hope so. It's got really good feedback. I'm very, very proud of it. So Good, good. So if you were to give somebody some tips on opening up, what would your your tips be? What would you say to them to do? The first thing is know what you're opening up to. So I think it's really important in my book, I talk about the five frequencies. So the five frequencies for me is setting that intention of where you are tuning your energy and your attention to. So whether you're working psychically, which is to me, I know it's different with lots of mediums, but in this space, psychic energy is earthbound. So me reading your energy, you reading mine, whether you're opening up to your spirit guides and your angels, whether you're working evidentially and you want to get that real proof, whether you're working in the healing energy or whether you're working in trance, which for anyone who's listening who doesn't know what trance is, is when spirit use your physical body to speak. And I think there's a lot of mediums out there that just open up and they don't know who they're opening up to or what they're opening up to. So the first thing is just having that thought of, I want to work evidentially, or I want to work with my spirit guide, or I want to work with my angels just makes everything clearer rather than, I I don't know who I'm working with, or I don't know what this information is or where it's come from. Mm -hmm. So that's my, my number one tip, which is really really just so important for people to know I think the other thing is just give everything I always encourage people to sit with the worst case scenario because I think mediumship feels bigger than it is in reality and sometimes like we were just saying you're so scared to say something because it feels so subtle or just nothingy ethereal it could be anything that we don't say it but actually is it better to have not said something or is it better to say it and possibly get it wrong what's the worst thing that's going to happen is someone's going to say I can't take that and you go 
oh, you can't take that. And they say, no, the world doesn't stop turning. That's all that a no is. So getting comfortable with no's, I think, is really, really crucial. I set myself a target when I first started working with Spirit that I wasn't going to get any no's. And that's how I'd know I was really good. And they kept coming in and saying to me, you need to get comfortable with no's. And I kept going, yeah, I will when I haven't got any. Yeah, I will when I haven't got any. And then because I wouldn't listen, Spirit bought me one of my hardest lessons, which was I was learning to demonstrate and I'm never worked in a church or anything like that I've always done it myself and I had like 15 people squeezed into this room which is quite small and they'd all come out and the thing was you couldn't just do one link and sit back down because they'd come out for the evening so I had to you know perform I got nothing but no's all night long the whole night people started doing the sympathy face at me it was horrendous I had tummy ache the energy was terrible just no no one could take any of the spirits And I quit mediumship. I had a massive half. I remember sitting on my sofa wrapped in a blanket, eating a Toblerone and crying and going, that's it. It's not the path for me. But I went back to it, obviously. And then I wasn't afraid anymore because I'd had my worst case scenario. My worst case scenario was a whole night of everybody saying no. I'd survived it. The world had stopped turning. I could carry on. And after that, it didn't affect me the same way. Wow. (laughs) Well, you did have people and I it it still puzzles me sometimes they'll come for a reading but they're almost shut down they just don't even so they, they they don't even know that it's right and what you're saying they can take but they're almost trying to prove you're wrong anyway don't you yes always a joy yeah. um and that's been a big that's been a big lesson for me because I will now say I'm sorry I don't think this is working and refund them because I will not put myself through it. It's not my job to to prove it to you if you want it to be disproved. Mm. And so I'm very mindful of that. I have a lot of um, people come up to me at Dems. Normally it's husbands and they're like, he's a non-believer. What can you do to make him believe? And I say, well, I've just demonstrated for two hours. If that wasn't enough, there's nothing. there's nothing I can do. Because there isn't some magic password that I can whisper into his ear that is going to suddenly change his outlook. So, yeah. And even if you deliver a message at that time, somebody might, no, I can't take that. It might be that they'll remember something later or something will transpire in their life. And because when they're giving evidence, spirits are giving evidence, it can be something that's happened that's a memory link from the past or something that they've been doing in the now or something that they're going to do, can't it? So it's... It can be any of those things. I, I I have to say now, knowing what I know now, I wonder if that night of no's would have actually been no's. Because now when I get a no, I will double check it and then I will stick with it if I know what I know. And I have to say, most of them, people twig afterwards. Yeah. And there was a demonstration I did and it doesn't always work this well. I don't want to misrepresent mediumship to your listeners, but I had one of those nights where it just the stars aligned, my energy aligned, and I had a gentleman through and I managed to get his name, what he did for a living, how he died, how old he was when he died. Um, and then he was telling me that there was a child born that had been named after him. His first grandson was born after he moved into spirit. Nobody could take it. And I went through all the evidence and double checked it and nobody could take it. And I said to him, you're going to have to show me where I knew where it was. And I pointed at a lady in the audience and said, I feel like I'm with you or somewhere close to you. And they all said no. And I I had to I had to leave it. I was like, well, here's this message, because I always give the message anyway, because you have to, don't you? And um, I left it and she came up to the interval and she said, I'm so sorry She said every single thing was right. It's my child that is named after him. I just, it wasn't who I expected to hear from. It was my father-in-law. And I just didn't expect to hear from him. So she had said, no, no, no. I'd pointed at her. She'd still said no. And you'd think when I'd said his name's Neil, (laughs) you'd think that she would have gone, my son's called Neil. (laughs) She's just pointed at me. But she didn't because I think when you're in an audience, you panic. Yeah, yeah. And you're, you've got your expectations of who you think you're going to hear from. And that's kind of where you stay. But that was a really good lesson for me that actually sometimes, no matter how good your evidence is, mm. you will still get a no. And the lessons just keep coming, don't they, really? They never stop. They never stop learning, do we? Never. 
I wouldn't want to either because that's the tenth time to go home. But um, yeah, it's uh, it is it is interesting. I don't know how you feel, but I feel totally honoured, blessed, adore what I do. I love doing. Mine was essentially my hobby is my full time career. Yours is slightly different, but it is very fulfilling, isn't it? Doing this sort of work, doing spirit Absolutely. work. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it almost too much, I think, Amanda, because I'm not very good at switching off. I think I think I've got an unhealthy relationship with it because I do because I do for a living what I would do for the love of it in my spare time. Like, how lucky are we? And we get to help people. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Oh, it is. It's lovely. Though I'm going to ask you a question. I haven't actually spoken about this out loud very much. So I'm just intrigued to know whether this is you or whether this is just something for me. But I, when I heard you say that you were, a, you know, used to admin and PA and all of that, I used to do all that sort of stuff. Um, I used to run offices and used to do payroll and accounts and all of that stuff. And now I'm rubbish at anything like that. Absolutely rubbish. Um, I'm just a very, I used to be more practical than what I am, a very impractical person. Um I brought up two kids on my own and ran a house. Now I just don't seem to be able to do those. I find 3D living, things that we have to do, really, really hard. But I find 5D, connecting with spirit, absolutely easy peasy lemon squeezy. Mm. I, yes, not, I mean, I'm pretty still good with like admin things, but house things, I just, I have no interest. I have no interest in the washing, I get doing cooking dinner, anything like that. And I, I tell you what I find really hard is small talk now. Oh, no, can't do I it. Can't, I can't remember how to communicate with people that aren't working with spirits. <laughs> I just, <laughs> it's so weird. So it, do, it definitely does. It's, I definitely prefer it in that space with spirit and all of those energies than, than down here with the muggles. Yeah. Oh, it's it's hard in muggle life, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh. Well, I have loved talking with you today. It's it's just nice to connect with like minded people, isn't it? And have sort of chats when people get what you're on about. You almost don't even need to fully sort of say things out loud. You just sort of you know what you're gonna say because you yeah, you're just on the same vibration. And I hope people yeah. listening are going to think, oh, I'm like that too. And, oh, that makes sense now. And hope they can open yeah. up to spirit and have spirit in their life as well. And obviously they need to go and read your book and listen to your podcast. What is your podcast called, Hannah? It's called Mediumship Matters. Lovely. Well, we'll put everything in the show notes. Um, there is a question that I want to ask you Um if you had one bit of advice that maybe you want to share with other people, it might be your own advice, it might be something that someone's given you that will help people on their journey, what is that going to be? Choose what lights you up. Okay. Choose what lights you up. It, if there's one thing working evidentially with so many people's loved ones, the overriding theme is they all thought they were going to have longer whether they pass really tragically and really young or whether they are lucky enough to leave here elderly, none of them feel like they had enough time. So don't wait for everybody else in your life to be sorted. Don't wait for every job to be off your job list so that you can start living. Choose yourself now. Live. Wow. That packs a punch. Thank you. No worries. Yeah. It's been lovely talking to you today and like I say, everything's in the show notes. But if anybody wants a really good medium, you are the woman to go to. Oh, thank you so much, Amanda. It's been so lovely to see you. I'm really grateful. You too. Take care. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If so, please hit follow and share my message by sharing with your friends. It would be amazing if you can leave a review. All this will help and it activates a universal law of the more you give, the more you receive. So it's a win-win. You can find more good stuff between episodes over on social media. Just search The Angel Mystic on Facebook, Instagram or TikTok or check out the links in the show notes. I'd love for you to connect more over in my free group in Abundance Manifesting all on Facebook. 
hope to see you there.